Sales Director of the U.S., Canada, and the Caribbean. Robert Riva resides in Palm Beach and was born in New York City. He initially spent five years post-college at Morgan Stanley, graduating from their three-year program, having raised $50 million of assets as a private wealth manager. Becoming unfulfilled with the world of finance, he joined a tech startup as head of sales enablement before being presented with the opportunity to spearhead sales for Sunrip Yachts and the three aforementioned territories. Within his first seven months with the Poland-born yacht company, the brand sold more yachts in the U.S. than they had in the previous three years. Welcome, yeah. Robert. All right. Thanks for the intro. Thanks for being here with us today. Next, we have the Yacht Guy. As the number one influencer in yachting since 2010, the Yacht Guy has garnered over a million followers across multiple platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and more. Welcome, Alex, the Yacht Guy. Thank you for having me. Thanks Thank for being here with you, us April. again. And then we, are, we have a very special guest today, Paige Mastrandrea, Managing Editor for Hope Media Group, Hope Living, will be moderating for us today. Turning it over to Paige. Thanks so much, April, and thank you both, Robert and Alex, for being here. We're excited to get into our discussion. So we'd like to start out by just seeing what trends you guys have been noticing in the industry right now. You want me to take it? Robert? Robert. Yeah, sure. Robert. All right, cool. So yeah, I, um, I, th I think it's probably best to kind of address that question as broader term, kind of over the last year or so what I've seen and then more recently with coronavirus. Um, so I think broader term, certainly I'm super fortunate to be working with the you know, leader in luxury catamaran manufacturing and design because uh, that's the fastest growing segment of the pleasure boat industry, hands down. Um, and I think that's just a function of, you know, after speaking to hundreds of clients, typically the answers are, you know, we're looking at catamarans because um, value, you know, you're getting double the amount of space for the same price. So that's always attractive uh, space. Um, sometimes you've got, you know, one spouse isn't necessarily an enthusiast, the other is. And so when they onboard a catamaran, what often happens is the spouse that wasn't really necessarily a yachting enthusiast starts to see this kind of more like a floating apartment use case. And uh, it becomes a sort of perfect compromise uh, vessel, making both parties very excited. And then the last is um, oftentimes we get people that are seasick on a monohull, but on a catamaran of equivalent size just aren't. So those are kind of some of the tailwinds that we've seen kind of trending that growth in the catamaran industry. And then kind of more micro on like the last couple of months, what I've seen is, and, and maybe Alex, I'm curious to hear your opinion, but I've seen a crazy spike in private use inquiries relative to commercial. And I think that's just a function of people having more time on their hands. You know, they're, they are now able to prioritize that decision. Um, whereas before they were running their business or, you know, they were just occupied and it wasn't necessarily the top of the priority list. Now you've got people that are kind of subscribing to that. You know, if not now, then when let's make sure we have this by 12 months from now and let's focus on, Know, everything that we need to, to really evaluate that decision. So that's kind of what I've been seeing. Yeah, I, I, agree, I agree with you. You know, uh, I think that um, a lot of people, this has opened up a lot of eyes till tomorrow's not promised today type thing, you know, and um, it, when are we going to do this? So uh, if we're going to do it, let's try to do it now. And that, and that falls in, in all capacities, right? From the super, super, super rich where they're just, saying, listen, I'm going to go out and buy this 300 foot that I've want, 300 foot yacht that I've always wanted to the, the moderately wealthy that are going to say, hey, listen, let's buy a hundred foot and let's just do this and get out. The second thing I think is um, the media, and I don't know how true this is. I'm not a doctor. I'm just going according to what I've heard. You know, there is a, a supposedly a second wave and a third wave coming. So people are saying, well, if there's going to be a second wave, Second time around, I'm not staying home. I'd rather just be on my own boat because so many people are not chartering, you know? So they're like, well, if they're not going to charter, let's just buy one. This way, nobody can tell us nothing. We're going to get on our boat and just go. Better to be quarantined in the eczemas on our very own private yacht than to be quarantined in your apartment building, even if it is on top of the Aston Martin building. <laughs> That's true. That's my point. Definitely. 
no shortage of boats out in Miami right now. So, um, and then yeah. we are you know, just a few months out from the Monaco Yacht Show, which is the biggest in the world that everyone looks forward to every year. Already we've seen a decent amount of brands announcing that they're pulling out. What do you think will happen with the show this year if that's the, what we're seeing so far? Um, well, I'm, I'm already, I'm opening my big mouth already, so I'm going to go. <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I get excited about this show. This show is like the mother of all shows. All the biggest and the best yachts are at this show. Um, every time someone asks me, which is your favorite show? And even though, uh, I'm an American and I love my American shows, this show is the show of all shows, right? So, um... I did get the news that some big brands are pulling out and um, and it's for safety concerns, not just for the people attending the show, but for crew members, captains, you know, the, the, uh, the people who are the, the, the promoters and the, the brands, you know, the brands and their, and their employees. So there's a big, big worry, you know, that the shows are not yet equipped or trained enough to handle the, these size crowds, right? How do we, who do we allow in? What are the measures we're taking to keep people um, in and out of these boats? And my experience with yacht shows has been shake your hand, shake your hand, shake your hand, shake your hand, big hug, big hug, shake your hand, shake your hand, where that I think in the future is gonna change. How exactly it's gonna change? I am not sure it's going to be different. That's for certain. We're all just gonna bow, man. This is gonna be the new, the new handshake. Namaste, which I'm totally okay with because shaking a thousand hands always freaked me out and I always had hand sanitizer in my pocket. So uh, this might be a good thing, who knows? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, what's gonna happen is really anyone's guess. Um, we're certainly optimistic it'll go forward, especially with the recent news of Khan happening um, or, so, and, and if it does, we'll be there and we'll be showcasing the 80 footer, which is, you know, our crown jewel of our production line. Um, the one that, you know, some celebrities have preferred to remain private, but others like Rafael Nadal don't mind, you know, us championing him and mentioning the fact that he did buy one. Um, so, but you know, how they'll manage the social distancing and, and enforcing, you know, the, those types of you know, the social distancing guidelines and, and people's willingness to fly, um, gonna be tough it'll be tough to kind of predict that but like i said earlier one thing is for sure the people that are there are serious so i'll be i'll be very excited to be dealing with whoever is there because those people are you know ready to write a check that day that's true i mean business so fingers yep. crossed so kind of leaning into the trends that have been happening around the world with all the big luxury shows basel world this year you know was a big change being canceled from coronavirus and then brands announcing that they were pulling out, starting their own show while others have also, you know, watches and wonders happen virtually this year and their brands showcased their new timepieces in that manner. Do you think that this signals trends in the yacht industry that will follow or do you think that there's still, you know, a future for in-person yacht shows? I know Robert, you guys did one, you know, you participated in some digital aspects of shows going on you know in the past few weeks so can you speak to what you think your thoughts are regarding that yeah no absolutely i think that this is um this is a, a much needed catalyst for a much needed uh industry shift toward leveraging technology um in the sales cycle i think that you know the yachting industry typically lags a little bit in that regard um we've been doing some virtual yacht shows you know you'd still have the 360 degree hotspot uh, views of, of, of the yachts you're able to tour. But I expect that tech to build and build fast because you know, for the foreseeable future, that's how people are going to be doing the first 90% of their yacht evaluation, right? They're going to be hammering the online resources. And those, those who have good configurators, you know, uh, maybe audio clickable on-demand audio explanations of key features on the boat, um, you know, the more real you can make that experience through a digital means, the more you're going to win. So whoever, whoever does that, and there's a race to do that, certainly. And, and so I, I expect shipyards to, to be pushing in that direction. You know, obviously the, 
there's no substitute for you know, uh, an in-person visit um, when you're buying a 10 plus, you know, 100 plus million dollar toy. Um, but I expect that to be the last, the last 5% of the process um, as opposed to, you know, what you see now where people are, are going to these shows and, and they're five, six, seven years out from purchasing a yacht. Uh, I, I don't see that being the case um, in the foreseeable future. Alex, what about you? I agree. I think um, the virtual show, everybody's been doing the virtual shows now. Denison has really jumped on board to, to just hammer away at the, at the virtual shows. Boat International is doing the, the virtual show. Everybody is doing their own version of the boat and the, the, the virtual shows because um, it's, the, it's just the way of the future. You know, I mean, this was inevitable. Tech and digital was going to be the way um, things were going to be in the future. I think COVID just really pushed things along a lot faster and got some flame on the people to move in that direction quicker. So, um, the future is no longer the future. The future is now, you know. So uh, it's going to be interesting the next year how people interact and uh, not only purchase their boats, but like uh, Robert said, how they decide they're going to tour their boats. And, and that's going to be done. Again, 90% of it is going to be done online. Look at all the materials. Look at the yacht. Get a look around. And then when they, they're very close to pulling the trigger, they go and they visit the boat. Yeah, I mean, certainly a change, but I do think that we've been seeing that the demand for the yacht industry has really taken off. So hopefully that'll signal some good sales on your end. Um, Robert, how has Sun Reef been reaching out to potential clients during this time, as well as your current clients? Um, what have been your most successful means of communicating with them when you haven't been able to see them in person? It's, it's a good question. Um, well, I, I can say that marketing has been keeping me very busy. So I've been doing a phenomenal job of uh, keeping the inquiries coming. Um, so you know, for me, this is really not that different in the sense that, you know, the first step is typically a discovery call or I'm, I'm on the phone with, you know, the interested client discussing, you know, their goals, what they expect, you know, the return on investment to be, uh, the use case where they want to keep it, et cetera, and learning a little bit more about what they want. And then, um, you know, the, then the next step is a Zoom call where we kind of go over the layout and we start tweaking and, and moving walls and prioritizing bathroom space and closet space and things like that. And um, maybe one out of five clients then, you know, want to see a boat. Most are purchasing sight unseen. Um, you know, they've seen our yachts in the, in the harbor, wherever they are. Some are in St. Bart's, some are elsewhere. And so the, the brand carries a, a strong uh, recognition. But for the people that are insistent upon seeing them, we have a couple in South Florida. So we've had a couple of people fly in. Um, obviously, we, we adhere to all the social distancing uh, you know, guidelines and everyone's wearing masks and the crew is wearing masks and uh, we're able to onboard. The, uh, we have a 60, a, sa a 60 sailing, an 80 sailing, and an 80 power all in South Florida right now. Um, so you know, for, for the larger, you know, our larger production lines, that's always, it's been helpful to have around. For sure. Because yeah. I know part of the problem with you guys is you don't always have the demand to be able to, you know, provide your clients with these boats. So that's great. Um, I also know that right before this happened, you made quite a nice sale. So congratulations on that, you know, being able to do it before this went into full effect. Have you seen any more success throughout quarantine? And, you know, what have been some success stories of Sun Reef? Yeah, so I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I did want to touch on that. So we actually sold the most voluminous luxury cat ever produced in the world uh, or that will ever be produced in the world uh, at 160 feet. Uh, to be delivered second half of 2021. So that's really going to feel like, uh, you know, an equivalent 300 plus three foot monohull. Um, hopefully it'll be ready for uh, Monaco 2021. That's our goal. I can't really talk all that much about it, but I can tell you, you know, it's going to be a 17 crew. It'll have seven, uh, 5,000 nautical miles of range. So it'll be capable of going anywhere in the world and wow. uh, 10 guests, 10 guests very, very, very comfortably. I mean, our 60 and 70 footers are comfortable for, for 10 guests. So, you know, 160 is just going to be, you know, blow that out of the water. 
Awesome. Uh, there's going to be a nightclub, a nightclub on board, uh, indoor theater. It's, it's, it's going to be quite an impressive project, and I'm super excited to, to showcase that one. Um, and then, you know, even more recently, I mean, we started off the year totally kicking butt. I mean, we, uh, we outsold the, in the first three months of this year, we sold more in the U.S. than we had in the previous three years combined. So that's, we were just rocking it. Obviously, you know, when the stock market took a falling knife in March, there was a tick back of hesitation. You know, we didn't really get all that many inquiries for a few weeks, but now that it's recovered, second half of April and first half of, uh, of May have been, like I've been swamped with, um, as I mentioned earlier, just pri a lot of private use individuals. Um, and then, you know, the shipyards obviously have been super busy. And fortunately, Poland has been the least, one of the least affected in, in Europe. Uh, Gdansk has been negligibly affected. That's where our shipyard is. So, you know, we, we did a really good job of getting out in front of it and uh, starting to put those preventative measures in place so that, you know, the shipyard could operate and not have to close down like some of the, unfortunately, you know, the Italian and, and, and French, French shipyards had to do. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thanks. And Alex, obviously, social media and, you know, digital communication has been huge throughout this time. Have you seen more and more brands approaching you to, you know, to collaborate or getting your advice now that everyone is trying to adapt to communicating with clients and potential clients digitally and showcase their products? So now that I think uh, the, the majority of my calls has been planning, 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 planning. All right. Um, we're not doing shows. We're not doing charters. Boats are sitting around. How can we get some more attention? If um, you guys have checked out the YouTube, the re our YouTube is just taken off. Well, one of our most, I've only been doing YouTube for six months and mm -hmm. our biggest video right now is almost at 4 million views. Wow. So wow. people are watching, they have nowhere to watch, you know, so they're gonna go to YouTube, watch the tours. And I tell everybody, I'm not a, 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 an aficionado when it comes to yachts. Right, so I'm not gonna give you all the yacht terminology, but I will walk around with someone who can, right? And I think it's always better for me to do it that way because instead of me having to memorize a million things that on this boat that I might forget, it's better to walk around with somebody like Robert and have Robert give us the walk around, you know, and, and, and tour the boat. So that's, that's what the calls have been lately. Alex, are uh, you gonna be available in, in, in November, or are you going to be available in December? Can we start setting things up? Um, even resorts have been um, getting in touch with me and saying, hey, can we do something at the resort? Maybe team up with a yacht company, and maybe we can bring you to the resort, blah, blah, blah. So um, people are starting to plan for the future now more than uh, I'm doing now because everybody's in go mode right now digitally doing what they can. The trick is looking ahead, you know, and um, not waiting till November to give me the call and say, can you come over when they should have called right around now, you know? Right. So that's, that's the trick. So we got a lot of people who are looking ahead and a lot of people again, who like always wait to the last minute. So. Yeah. Why is social media so important? I mean, always, but especially right now. I mean, I think I was, I was saying social media was important back in the beginning when I first started back in 2010, you know, and I started social media by accident um, in 2010. Um, as a way to share yachts because I just love yachts, right? It was a mental escape for me. And then it became a job. So in 2014, I was going and, and speaking at events saying, listen, if you guys are not on social media, you are literally missing the boat, right? And everybody thought it was a joke. Oh, that's a bunch of kids. There's no, there's no sales on there. Nobody cares about social media. But these kids who were 10 in 2014, right, are now in their 20s, right, and, and daddy's paying for vacation to send these kids out on, on, on yacht vacations, right, or they're making recommendations to stick a yacht out, dad, or buy, dad buy a yacht. So um, I think a lot of the brokers picked up, a lot of the big brands early even picked up, and um, without saying any particular, were really, in the beginning, jumped on board and was like, this is, he's right, we got to get on this. So um, it was important back then. It's just as important now. So if any companies are out there right now that are not using social media to um, to shoot to, to to you know to do some marketing, they're really falling behind. Completely agree. 
Do you find that both of you, I mean, are people leasing yachts or buying them more right now? Robert. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, and this is probably biased because I'm dealing with buyers, I get the occasional charter uh, inquiry, but um, buying buying more now, uh, and I think that that's just maybe a function of like the travel bans and the inconsistent information about kind of which countries are allowing, what's the self-quarantine rule when I come back, when I go, how long can I go, is the... It, are the boats in that, is that marina closed? Is the airport closed? There seems to be so much sort of inconsistent information about where and, you know, how and when that, you know, and then you have to, co- and most of these people are coordinating groups of friends, right? You have the families, but you have some people that are like three, four, five couples. That nor- so coordinating that's already a pain. Now you got to coordinate that plus the travel restrictions. So I think in general, it's just kind of a pain right now and people are, 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 are waiting it out. But um, I'm curious to hear, if, you know, Alex, what, what you're saying. So for me, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a broker, and for me to give any insight on that is really difficult. But from people I've spoken to, it's been tough with the, you go from point A to point B, and then point B expects you to quarantine for 14 days, right. you know? So you can't really, you might get there on the boat, but you can't get off the boat, you know? Um, the other thing is, Coast Guards in most countries, including the U.S., aren't letting anybody out or in. Um, I don't know if that's opened up or not, but that was the last thing I had heard. So, um, yeah, that, that's all I can tell you from that pr- uh, perspective, because, like, again, I'm, I'm not a broker, so uh, I'm limited to the what's going on in that, that field. Yeah, and kind of building off of, you know, the safety and the protocol for being on a yacht right now, what are some measures that yacht owners should take moving forward to be safe? So I think if you're chartering your boat out, um, you may want to be, you know, you may want to be a little bit cautious with having your crew self-quarantine for a couple of weeks before you get on it, right? After that charter, if the charter was for a month or something, you know, then maybe you don't have to be as concerned. But for a one-week, two-week charter, you, you may want to ask your crew to sort of self-quarantine, see if anything happened to them before you get yourself on the boat. But otherwise, I mean, all the same measures you would take at home. You know, if if not, it's safer, right? You're not dealing with the Amazon packages and right? The paranoia of if the package is a COVID carrier and sort of, you know, so you're actually safer uh, on the water. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very tricky because um, to be able to ask the crew to quarantine for 14 days on a boat, you got to pay them for two weeks to sit around and do nothing, yeah. right? And that's been a big issue, unfortunately, for a lot of these crew members that have been finding themselves out of jobs because uh, a, lot of, a lot of owners are like, I'm not going to pay you to sit around for three months. Everything's shut down. You know, find and then these guys got to find their way home. They're in countries that are not letting them out. Um, so it's been tough. Uh, going forward, what the standard is going to be for charters, that's going to be tricky, you know. Uh, I know a lot of the yachts are super, super clean to begin with. Um, they don't, they don't, you go on any yacht, any yacht I've ever been on, spotless. Spotless, absolutely spotless. How much cleaner are they going to get? Are they going to start using disinfectants and those uh, disinfectant smogging machines or fogging machines? That's to be seen, you know. So it's 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 going to be a very uh, it's a it's a huge hurdle, and um, I think it's going to be a, a learn as you go process. Definitely, we actually have kind of going off of similar question. Uh, an audience member has asked, do you feel that self-quarantining in, on a yacht is a safe option? Yeah, I mean, uh, you're interacting with less people than you would if you self-quarantined in your apartment simply by, even if you're ordering your groceries in and you're not leaving your apartment, that, that in and of itself is an act that you wouldn't necessarily have on a yacht. Um, eventually, you'll have to stop somewhere to, to refuel and reload, but you know, if you're hanging out in the Bay in the Caribbean and you have ample food, I'd say you're probably safer, safer, frankly. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta do a lot of the same things you do at home anyway, right? Fueling up, you gotta go out for groceries. You gotta get in your car. Um, it's not like when people say, Oh, you gotta stay home. The whole stay home thing means stay home, but you can't just stay home. Food doesn't grow unless you own a farm. Food is food. Isn't just going to grow out your back door. You gotta go out and eat it, right? You gotta, do something you got to interact with people even though it is to a minimum you still got to do it so it's going to be the same on a boat you got to go out you're going to find a port pull in or anchor when when um you need provisions 
You're going to have to send someone out in the crew to go get them and then train them to limit their exposure to people when they get back, you know? So um, that'll be that. Yeah. And Robert, I have a few questions for you from the audience that are sunroof directed um, and catamaran specifically. Uh, first, can you explain the square footage advantage of a catamaran versus a traditional boat? Do you give up performance for space? So uh, part one, square footage advantage. Um, you're getting essentially double the space for the same price. So basically a 3,900 square foot cat, which is around 80 feet in our, in our production line. So you're getting 3,900 square feet for roughly $1,500 to $1,800 a foot. Uh, to get 3,900 square feet on a monohull, you'd be paying almost double, you know, probably in the, in the high 2000s a foot. Um, so that's, and that's just, you know, a function of the design. So I always tell people when you're looking at catamarans, get length out of your head. Let, don't think in terms of length anymore. Now it's in terms of square footage, the same way you'd evaluate an apartment. Um, and do you give up performance? So on our vessels, they're a little heavier, right? We're like the Rolls Royce of the space. You're going really heavy luxury. Um, so yeah, you're not going to go as fast as you would if you were to get like a gunboat. So from a sailing perspective, I'm talking about sailing right now, you're going to go a little slower on a sun reef because, you know, so you'll get there maybe an hour later, uh, depending on how far you're going, but you get there in luxury. Um, so you just sacrifice a little bit on performance because of the weight of the boat. And, um, but fuel efficiency is way greater too. So, you know, there's obviously a given to take uh, on the power side, you'd be going 22 knots top speed, as opposed to maybe, you know, a, a monohull could go maybe 28, 29. So you sacrifice 20, 30% on the speed, but you're getting way more fuel efficiency, way more space, way more comfort. You know, it's, it's more of a family bonding, let's get there in style kind of vibe. Right. The other, the other thing, if you don't mind me, if I might add, the other thing is, hardly anybody goes anywhere at 28 knots unless they're in a rush. You're usually traveling 12, 10, 15, 14 knots. You're cruising. Yachting is cruising, not racing. Um, and I don't, I don't know anybody who's looking to burn up their credit card just to get somewhere faster. Good point. Great point. So what are one to two reasons to switch to a catamaran boat from another member in the audience? Um, again, if you're someone, it depends on you, what your return on investment is, right? So if you're looking at this as a private use, the return on your investment in a cat is the family bonding, right? You're able to spend quality time in what is effectively a floating apartment with views anywhere in the world. Okay. And away from distractions of the everyday life on land, right? So the kids aren't here on their iPad and, and not spending time with you. You're able to, you're, you're doing all of these wonderful things out in the open on what is effectively a home on the water. So that's the major kind of return on your investment that you can expect from a qualitative, like, you know, uh, expectation. Um, financially, they charter incredibly well. So a lot of people that have high taxable income don't even know that if you buy a catamaran, well, if you buy any yacht, but the cat specifically charters so well, you buy it in a company and you put it into charter, you can depreciate the entire purchase price of the cat against your taxable income from any source. So we've got doctors, lawyers, you know, corporate C-level executives making, you know, multi-millions a year. They buy a cat, you know, buy one of our cats for three, four, five, six million, and they pay zero taxes in year one because they can depreciate the entire purchase price against their... And in the meantime, these, these cats are generating 35, 50, 60, $70,000 a week, uh, depending on their size and location and charter. So, and that's a function of being able to put more, um, more cabins in the holes as well. So we're able to put five, six cabins comfortably in a 60 footer. So it, it's just the perfect situation for, then you open up a market of people, you know, there's a lot of people that can afford $35,000 a week when you split it with five couples uh, it's, it's, it's a much more reasonable value prop. So those from a business and personal perspective, I'd say those are the two key, key points to make uh, about transitioning to a cat. Good points. Um, one more for Sunreef. What are your most high demand markets in the U S and also in Miami, particularly, do you see more snowbirds purchasing than before year or year round residents? 
Yeah, it's a great question. So ironically, actually, Newport Beach, California, has been the highest quality of clientele. And, you know, I've been getting quite a few inquiries from them in the last couple of months. Um, so Cali in general has been actually a really strong market. And they don't necessarily keep the boat there, right? They keep it on the East Coast. So they're keeping it in Miami or they're keeping it in the Bahamas or the Caribbean. Um, yet yeah, some over the last couple of months, I'd say some snowbirds, people that have, you know, their summer home in the Hamptons uh, and their use is they want to have something down here for the winter and then something that they can take up to the Hamptons uh, in the summer. And so, you know, the, the range on the cats and the fuel efficiency make that, you know, a more viable um, purchase. Great. And then I know Rafael Nadal is one of your clients, which is a great, you know, case study for you nice guys. Drag. <laughs> Do you guys have anyone else that are big names outside of Rafael Nadal that you could reveal that are clients of yours? Yeah, so we, we, have, uh, we have a couple real big time ones I can't reveal uh, from the West Coast. Um, we have uh, Giancarlo Stanton is someone that is interested. Uh, we're discussing, we're chatting a little bit at this point. Um, so he's so tall that we're having, uh, you know, he needs a seven foot clearance and we're at about 6'10". So we're talking about raising, raising the roof just a little bit, just a little <laughs> bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, those, are, those are the names I can divulge for now. Okay, great. Um, and then what do you both see as kind of, your predictions for the state of the industry for the rest of 2020? Uh, for me, I think um, it is going to be um, who can pivot and, and make things happen. And then those who find that their teams are struggling, right? So a strong team is going to be able to already now be you know, or before, even before this started, already have pivoted and started planning for the future and seeing how are we going to make this work because the future is obviously going to change, you know, and then you're going to have the teams that are going to be like, no, 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 this is going to go away. We just need to ride it out. And then they're going to see it is not going to be the same. And, you, you know, you you now you got to get started late in the game. So I think that's going to be, that's going to be tough. And you'll see who does that, who does it best and who, who, who fails to, to act. Yeah, that's great. And, I, and I'll add from the client side, the smart money is buying right now. And the smart money is buying right now for two reasons. One, they know that they have the leverage, right? Cash is king in any potential crisis. So they know that they've got more leverage than in general, okay? And the second is that by the time their boat is built, in a year from now, we're talking about early summer, whether it's for private use, right? Summer vacation, kids, family, et cetera, in the Mediterranean, beautiful time of year, ideal to pick up your boat. Or if it's for commercial use, you have a hell of a lot of pent up demand coming to fruition a year from now, right? Assuming that there's a vaccine and people feel safe and et cetera, which I think we fully expect to happen in a year's time. You're going to have a lot of people that want to go on vacation in the summer and you have a boat getting built brand new delivered in May, your, your charter is going to book up faster than you don't even know what to do with yourself. So that the, the smart money right now knows they can get it for less and they're going to be fully booked up in a year's time. So the rest of 2020, just like Alex said, is preparing for 2021. That's, that's the motive and that's the motto for any smart money in 2020. Agreed. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, before we wrap up, do you do either of you have any closing remarks to make? Are you gonna send us sandwiches or anything? Is there gonna be like a lunch that goes along with this? Uh, like snacks. Yes, yeah. only if we can do it on Robert's yacht that's in for come, a lot. Come <laughs> all always includes lunch. Come one, come all. We gotta get Alex on on a couple of sunries and do some videos soon. We've gotta do it. Gotta do it, man. For sure. We gotta set that up. Well, thank you so much to both of you for your time and insight. It was a pleasure talking to you and learning more about the yachting industry. Well, thank you for having me, greatly appreciate it. Robert, I look forward to showing everybody what it's like to spend a three, day, three days on a, on a cat with you and give these guys the experience along with the whole team. So we should do it.
I'm going to call you when we get off this. We're coordinating it. I'm not, I'm not about that. Like, yeah, let's do it in the future. Let's do it now. Let's set it up. I'm calling you that. Let's do it. Hold in. Just raise this like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye.